My name is Sarah Woodbury. I'm here today with my husband Dan to talk about Robert of Rithla. Insert inane question to stimulate discussion here. <laughs> Who was Robert of Rithlan and why are we talking about him? Oh, good question. <laughs> Last week we talked about Gerald of Windsor, who was a vassal to the Earl of Pembroke. Robert of Ridlon was a vassal to the Earl of Chester, so in the same position except in North Wales. Robert was a Norman. He was actually raised in the household of Edward the Confessor, the prior King of England. When William put in his claim to the throne, Robert supported him naturally and was rewarded with the authority over the Norman forces in North Wales. He was also the cousin to the newly appointed Earl of Chester. So starting about 1071, he began a campaign to take as much of North Wales as he could, having initial success to the point that he built Rithlan Castle as a Mott and Bailey castle over the top of a Welsh palace. Not, not where the stone castle is today, but mm -hmm. adjacent to it. He then encountered more resistance, um, particularly in the form of Traher, who was the King of Gwyneth. He was still able to build De Ganwy Castle, which is on the east side of the Conwy River, again over the top of a Welsh palace. Mm -hmm. Because he couldn't make any more inroads past the Conwy River, he then allied with a Welshman named Griffith Ap Kinnan, whose father, Kinnan, had been the man who killed Griffith Ap Llewellyn, that King of Wales we talked about in a prior video. So they ally, have initial success against Traher, but then Traher counterattacks and Griffith is forced to flee to Ireland. Then in 1081, Griffith put together an army of mixed Danes and Irish, his kin, and invaded Wales again, killing Traherne in battle, making himself King of Gwyneth. For Robert's purposes, however, Griffith was no better than Traherne and wasn't going to give up any territory. Mm -hmm. So he and the Earl of Chester invited slash lured Griffith to a meeting and imprison him for 12 years. At that point, Robert is then free to take over the rest of Gwyneth, which he actually does, building castles all throughout Gwyneth, but uh, particularly like at Aber, Bangor, and Carnarvon. The ending for Robert comes when Griffith escapes from captivity in Chester Castle, returns to Ireland, gathers a force, and comes and kills Robert in battle. The English story is a little bit different. As it goes, Robert was taking a siesta at his seaside castle when he heard the cries of his people. Viking raiders had come. Robert gathers an army who, doesn't, who don't attack because they fear the size of this force. So Robert, alone except for one guard, races down to the beach, is pierced by many darts, and dies. Tragically and heroically. Uh -huh. Uh, history is written by the victors, I yes, might add. Yes. Griffith then, however, becomes King of Gwyneth and actually starts a dynasty, which we will talk more about in later videos. Before we get to Griffith, however, we we're going to talk about another Mott and Bailey castle called Tomene Mir, built during this era. If you like this video, click on the playlist or subscribe to my channel. There will be a new video next week. And if you want to check out my books, click on the link to my webpage.